The events of the past year have more than just challenged people's faith in public institutions, including the post office. Often when organizations look to perform damage control, they undergo a rebranding. In the case of the Postal Service, they look to deliver a new image. Investing in a physical representation as an embodiment of a public service is risky business. It costs money, physical labor, time, and real estate. As we've pushed the exchange of information further outside the realms of physical boundaries during the pandemic with relative ease, does physical placemaking, particularly for an entity whose entire existence is based on transience, really matter? Here we are viewing the desktop of a young architectural designer, cluttered, distracted, counting down the minutes until 5 o'clock. They receive an email from a faceless manager, not even personally addressed. Within the file browser, we find a number of federal land holdings, including multiple post offices around the country. Opening the scan, we see the superstructure in the background, data points in the upper left-hand corner. Suddenly, there is an immediate shift in ontology. The high contrast images produce a machine-readable differentiation of material, remotely being compiled into elevations. The surveillance continues from outside to in. The logistical area. Employee services. Sorting machinery. Offices and retail space. An elevator. 
elevated park. Eventually, these scans and point clouds can be understood in a three-dimensional BIM model. In this environment, the production of conventional architectural representations become possible through an omnipotent system, Deus Ex Machina. Aside from renderings, architectural representations typically lie outside of public interest. They are a means to an end, informational input to the process of construction and reproducibility. To that extent, such information doesn't need to be pictorial. When reduced to a finite number of elements, an architectural project represented by something like a finish schedule could tell the right end user more than a picture ever could. For example, if you want to try out a new recipe, you don't bring a picture to the grocery store, you take a list of ingredients. Once that ingredients are itemized and collected, a system is implemented for their agglomeration. If specificity of place is no longer a requirement for the relationship between image and information, it can be established elsewhere, both physically and metaphysically. In the recording and subsequent transmittal of such an image, it accumulates a kind of social velocity with each new exchange, building an inherent value with potential to be commodified. 